very eventful times. Welcome to the How to Stay and Survive the Coronavirus Plague Briefing Podcast Episode Number Eight uh, Eighty One. <coughs> Podcast episode number 81. My name, excuse me, my name is Daniel White, the third president of Gospel Light Society International. <coughs> the scripture passage that I want to open with is Leviticus. Chapter 26, verse 21, <clears throat> and it reads, and if, w- and if ye walk contrary unto me, this is God speaking, if ye walk contrary unto God, and will not hearken unto me, listen to me, obey me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I do know that many of you have been deceived into thinking that Christian people are so special in God's sight that he will not chastise us, and that's just not the case. Uh, That is uh, false doctrine that you have learned from somewhere. And I guarantee you it's from somebody who has a seminary degree. They're just dead wrong. You need to understand that God is chastising the church first and foremost right now. And, uh, and what God wants us to do is repent. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the two services this morning and uh, early afternoon. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for nearly 20,000 people showing up today, or at least 20,000 devices, probably, no doubt, way more people than that behind those devices. And we thank you, Lord, that they heard the gospel, and uh, we still pray for millions to hear the gospel and to be saved, because we do know and still believe gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And Holy Father God, in this briefing, help us as people who are already saved understand that we need to humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways and repent and get back to you, our first love. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Dr. Thomas Constable Constable said regarding this verse, Moses revealed five levels or waves of punishment. And if you read your Bible, you will find that that's how God operates. From the plagues on Egypt to the plagues on Israel, and to the plagues on the church, especially in the future. Uh, uh, and, well, plagues and plagues on the world in the future. Uh, and I believe the plagues on the church uh, throughout church history. And, uh, and especially right now, he does it in waves waves of punishment. 
if Israel did not turn back to God after the first penalties, the first punishments, God would bring the second on them or the second wave and so on. The second stage of barren land might follow. The third stage would be divine extermination of their cattle and even their children, two curses. The fourth stage would be war, plagues, and famine, three curses. The fifth stage would be the destruction of the Israelites, families, idolatrous practices, and places, land and nation, through dispersion, four curses. In her history, in the land of Israel, in her history in the land, Israel experienced all of these curses because she eventually despised the Mosaic law. The record of this failure is not consistent. There were periods of revival and consequent blessing. Nevertheless, the general course of the nation proceeded downward to this very day. So what ought we to learn from this as God's people, born again ones, Christians, as we were commanded by the New Testament to learn to see the Israelites, the people in the Old Testament as our examples and to learn from them. What ought we to do? We need to do what Second Chronicles seven fourteen told them to do. To do. Told them to do. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. If you have been deceived into not believing the Old Testament, well, here's the New Testament for you. In fact, straight from the mouth of your Savior, Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5 says, Nevertheless, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Prophet Leonard Ravenhill said, No man is greater than his prayer life. The pastor who is not praying is playing. The people who are not praying are straying. The pulpit can be a shop window to display one's talents. The prayer closet allows no showing off. Our briefing news segment starts with, according to Axios, Dr. Anthony, Anthony Fauci, Dr. Anthony Fauci testified to a Senate committee today, Tuesday, that he would not be surprised if the U.S. begins reporting as many as over 100,000 new coronavirus cases per day, adding, I am very concerned and not satisfied with what's going on because we're going to the we're going in the wrong direction. Dr. Fauci said that today before Congress. According to the New York Times, a new strain of the H one N one swine flu virus is spreading silently among workers on pig farms in China and should be urgently controlled to avoid another pandemic 
a team of scientists says in a new study, H1N1 is highly transmissible and spread around the world in 2009, killing about 285,000 people and morphing into seasonal flu. According to the Wall Street Journal, a surge in coronavirus cases in the parts of the U.S. Uh, has prompted several states, in certain parts of the U.S., has prompted several states and locales to pause or roll back reopening, which was much ballyhooed here a few weeks ago. As some hospital systems began groaning under the strain, right at 40,000 coronavirus cases were recorded nationwide Sunday, according to data from Johns Hopkins University. According to the AP, Arizona health officials reported 3,858 more confirmed coronavirus cases Sunday, the most reported in a single day in the state so far and the seventh time in the past 10 days that daily cases surpassed the 3,000 mark since the pandemic or the plague began over 75,000 cases and over 1,600 deaths stemming from the virus have been reported in Arizona. Governor Ducey said our expectation is that our numbers next week will be worse. According to study finds, asymptomatic Coronavirus patients cannot only infect others directly, but also contaminate the surrounding environment. 39.3% of tested surface samples were found to be positive for the coronavirus. According to the Times of Israel, doctors say half of cured coronavirus patients still suffer. Recovered coronavirus patients are baffling doctors with complaints of freak pains, lungs that just won't get back to normal, and a range of incapacitating psychological issues. What we are seeing is very frightening, Professor Gabriel Izbiki of Jerusalem's Shah Zedek Medical Center said more than half of the patients weeks after testing negative are still symptomatic. Ladies and gentlemen, according to Yonhap News Agency, recent infection clusters at Wang Song Church in Seoul's southwestern ward of Guanak and uh, at Jesus Young Wang Church in the southern city of uh, Anyang added eight and seven more cases on Sunday, bringing the total case loads to 27 and 18. By way of alternative housing. Uh, I have been informed not only from the news but from uh, individuals. There are people who are hurting right now and who they're, they're, they're being threatened as far as eviction is concerned or foreclosure. And and what I have encouraged you to do is not get to that point. If you know that you were living, 
your life based upon a job, and the job is gone, and you're trying to hold out hope that the job will come back and the plague will go away. None of those things are happening. They're not happening, and they will not happen this year. One uh, doctor said last night he has, no, one, one uh, government, former government official said last night she has given up on 2020. 2020 will not, as far as she is concerned, uh, will not return to normal or, or nowhere near it. She said that, I'm trying to think of a name, Dr. Haham, something like that. She uh, has a foreign sounding last name. And uh, she said that 2020 is shot. After what has happened over the past week or two, said it's over. You can forget about it. 2020 is done. There's no, no going back to normal or anything close to it. She has given up on it. Like, and, and, and most people who have any insight will say the same thing. It's, just stop. Excuse me. Stop holding out hope that things are going to get back to normal this year. And we will never get back to normal after this. Never. We'll never be the same. So you need to be thinking differently. You need to be dealing with some hard facts and truths that you never thought in your life that you would have to deal with. Okay? You need to think about moving. There are many people, the smart people are moving, have been moving over the past two and a half months. And they're moving now. And yes, and these are people who uh, uh, are well-to-do. Yes, white folks are moving too. And yes, if you're black or brown or yellow, you need to move as well. You need to get out of the city, major cities. You need to move out into the countryside, you need to move into a situation where you're not worried about where you're going to lay your head, meaning you don't need a mortgage. You don't need a $6,000 mortgage like some people have. Some people are paying rent, $5,000 a month to just to impress people. $4,000. You don't need that. You don't have the money to support that. And you're not going to get the money to support that. You don't have a job. The job is not coming back. I'm telling you to your face right now, just like I told you three months ago and two months ago and one month ago when they were talking about all this Ballyhooed um, oh, reopening and how it's going to be this and that, and it's a big flop like I knew it was going to be. I tried to tell you. And you went running out there. Now we got we got thousands of folks going to the hospital. Because people don't listen. They're proud and they think they uh, know everything and they don't. This is not going away, people, until the church repents and the church pushes the government in America to repent primarily of all sin, but primarily of causing the church and the government to sanction homosexuality, homosexual marriage, and the homosexual agenda, which includes grown men going into female bathrooms with little girls because they just have a notion. You don't know what kind of hell you're opening up on this country by doing that. When grown, muscular men are running against little girls in track. All this foolishness and confusion. And if the church does not repent of that and demand that the government repent of that foolishness, this is not going to happen, people. You, you will never see normal USA again in your lifetime. 
you might see a new normal, but that's what it's going to be, a new normal. And you're not going to like it. So you need to, some of you need to consider this. And I'm not talking about using credit and buying something on time. I'm talking about selling your house, using your equity, and buying something cash so that you don't have a payment on what you're living in. I mentioned this yesterday. I'm going to mention it again. You can find alternative housing at motorhomespecialist.com where the world shops for motorhomes and RVs. The website is mhsrv.com. Some of you have already thought about it, <clears throat> but you never thought about doing it full time and selling your house. Many white folks, uh, I know you may not like that terminology, but I'm just stating it for you in case you're not aware. Many white folks have been doing this for years. Many retire, retirees have been doing this for years. They, will sell, they sell their house, they buy a motorhome cash or an RV cash, and they live in that full time. You may not have thought about that in recent years, but maybe you need to think about that now. <clears throat> You're going to have to humble down. You're going to have to come off of your high horse. You're going to have to forget about the damnable uh, prosperity gospel foolishness. You're going to have to humble down, and you're going to have to downsize. I have other options for you. I've been mentioning them for weeks and months because I've been trying to get you for the past three months to leave now get out of the situation where you got a heavy payment heavy utilities heavy taxes because you're not going to have the money to pay for it and they are going to if you don't move yourself you can listen to the lying politicians all you want to about them holding them off from evicting you and foreclosing on you uh, let me just ask you a question how many letters have you received? How many foreclosure letters or close to foreclosure letters? Little warnings. How many eviction notices have you received? How many phone calls are you avoiding? Because you, you, they, don't care nothing, they don't care anything about that. And they act like they've never heard of that before. All they're going to do is legally point you to the, the, the thing that you signed. And you can say, but, 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 and, 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 and push come to shove, you probably can stay there another month or so. But you don't want to put yourself in a position where you lose everything. If you can get twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 out of the deal, get it. Humble yourself down, leave your mansion or what you think is a mansion behind and go ahead and move into a used motorhome or travel trailer or double wide or tiny house or a single wide trailer and live so that you and your family can survive and be a help and blessing to somebody else. And if everything comes back miraculously in the future, two, three, four, five years, then you, you'll be in a better position. Your money will be saved up and you can buy a house cash at that point. But right now, you, you don't need to be in a situation like that. So go to w. Uh, I'm sorry, mhsrv.com. Emerging into the motorhome industry in 1964, the National RV Company has been responsible for providing some of the most popular, recognized, and innovative motorhomes and RVs for over 40 years. Starting out as a two-man operation, National RV has transformed into one of the most experienced and largest recreational uh, vehicle manufacturers in the United States. Fortune magazine even featured National RV in one of their 100 fastest growing companies issues. If you're searching for the perfect National RV motorhome, uh, motorhome specialist is the ideal place to find one. Some 
RV types are diesel pushers, where the engine is in the back of a bus-like uh, RV motorhome. Class A, where the engine, I think, is in the front. Class C and B, a little bit smaller motorhome. Super C, a little bit larger motorhome than the, than the B and C, I believe. Sprinter chassis, smaller motorhomes, Class B. Fifth wheels, uh, fifth wheels are, are well liked by people who like to drive big trucks and things like that. Uh, I don't know really why they like them, but they, they love them. Uh, one of the things I think, they have more space in them. Uh, but number eight, travel trailers, a simple little deal. You can buy a used travel trailer in good shape. Um, from anywhere from six, eight, ten, twelve thousand, thirteen thousand dollars, man. Pay for it, cash, and live in it. And you you haul it somewhere, and you park it, and you got your house right there with you, with everything that you have in it. You, of course, you're gonna have to put some things in storage if you want to keep a whole lot of stuff. Number nine, bus conversion. Bus, big old bus. Uh, there are some people who have uh, they bought a school bus. If you know how to, you know how to do some carpentry work. You know how to fix things. You can buy an old school bus for five hundred dollars or less, or thereabouts. An old school bus and, and and make that thing into a house. You said, man, I never thought about doing anything like this. I never, I never. You, you got to go with what's going on right now. You can't go on what you thought. <laughs> What you you know what what you want it to be? It's not that. It's not going to be that. And see, this is the problem with us Americans. We want it to be the way we want it to be. And God is showing the church and America that it can't be the way you want it to be if you're not going to obey God. Okay, it's just not. It's not. It's, it, the game has changed. And if you want to survive and not be out in the street, you better change with it. And you've got to do what you've got to do. And you need to do it now. You don't need to wait till the fall. So thinking that, oh, well, the children will be back in school in the fall. No, they don't. No, they won't. Football will be on TV. No, it won't. Basketball will be on TV. No, it won't. The World Series will be played, uh, and, you know, full-fledged and all that. No, it won't. Nothing is, none of this stuff is going to happen, people. I'm telling you now. But see, you know, we, we, we have the American spirit, so we want to lie and keep people's hopes up and, 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 and then, you know, drop it on them later. And, and then if we do anything, it's, it's, excuse the expression, it's halfway. As my dad used to say, it's half-ass. Excuse me. That's what he said. He's in heaven now. You don't want, it's not, uh, not going to happen for you, people. I, I know some people are wanting, they want the, the, the children to go back to school so badly. They're sick and tired of their own children. And God is trying to help you understand that you need to spend all the time you can with your children and love your children and raise up your children yourself. And especially in, in light of all of the shootings at school. Why why you want to be in a hurry to take send your child out to a war zone? God tried to warn you. Now you have an opportunity to homeschool your own children and get to know your children. That's not happening. In most places, it's just not going to happen, people. Don't get your hopes up. Don't believe lying politicians. They want everything back to normal because they want to try to win an office and try to maintain power or get power. Don't believe these lies. Don't believe lying politicians. Don't believe happy talk pastors telling you everything's going to be all right. Everything's not going to be all right. Everything's not all right right now. It's not. You, so you need to make some changes. Let me help you. Prepare to have your children home throughout 2020 and much of 2021 if the Lord tarries is coming, if the Lord allows us to live, if the Lord does not destroy America by then. <clears throat> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, this dream land thing y'all got going on is not working, people. It's, it's foolishness. None of that's happening. And let me, let, me, let me help you with some other dreams. The government is not going to help you with much more money. 
they don't have the money. The government is not going to step in and save your house or save your apartment or your car. Get rid of, if you got a pavement on a car, get rid of the car too. Get whatever money they might be able to give you back if you're leasing it or whatever. I don't know what you're doing. Uh, but get you a car where you don't have a payment. At least do that. All you need is transportation that can get you to HEB in Texas or Kroger's or whatever your favorite grocery store is. Walmart. That's all you need a vehicle for. For you to risk, you know, everything and go into the store to get you something to eat. You don't, you don't need it for anything else. Not now. So I must move on. Be wise, people. Be wise. Harmless as a dove. Be wise as a serpent. Harmless as a dove. You need a job. I, 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 what are you talking about? You need a job. I'm not go, I don't want to go out there working. I'm, not, that's what I'm, I'm trying to help you. You don't need to go out to no job and work. I advise against it. You don't need to be working at any uh, place right now with this plague out there in the street. Nor do you need to be going to a church building anywhere right now, period. Anywhere in America, anywhere in the country. It's later for that. Stay home. So I'm not picking on the church. I'm picking on your job as well, if you will. You don't need to go back to your job where people are dying. And so I'm going to skip one of them. Well, I'm going to skip one of these today. It's called Amazon Camper Force. You don't have to write that down because you need to have a motorhome and you need to work at an Amazon factory somewhere. Amazon um, warehouse. So... But they may have some online work for you, too. Number seven, career builder. Number eight, dribble. Number nine, hub staff. Number ten, remote work hub. Go to these places and try to land you a job that you can work from home or wherever you are. If you have not finished your degree and you need to finish it, uh, here is a list of the best online colleges from bestcolleges.com. Arizona State University, uh, one of the forerunners of online college work. Sky Song University of Illinois at Springfield. Northeastern University, Texas Tech University, and Pennsylvania State University World Campus. In closing, as always, I told you that I would help you with the home family life, the home church life, the home school life, the home business life. Today is home business. Proverbs 14.23 says, In all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. And that is so true. We got people who love to talk about doing stuff. They never do anything, and they never work. And so, therefore... Uh, it doesn't work out, and they end up with nothing. Uh, this is a story from Dr. Dave Ramsey, and this is going to be a part one, part two, maybe a part three as well. And I, I, and, and I want you to listen to what Dave Ramsey has to say to these people, and I want you to notice how that Dave Ramsey will get right in your face and tell you straight up what the deal is. The question is, Rhett in Houston and his brother are involved in a family-owned business. And I'm bringing this up because the other option than getting an online job is to start your own business and you create your own job. Some of the sweetest words in the world is, I am self-employed. Mr. Cuban of the Dallas Mavericks said, I would rather have a business that makes $50,000 a year. No, I'd rather have a business make, yeah, a business making $50,000 a year than a job making a million dollars a year. That's just his mentality. That's the mentality of many other people who are entrepreneurs. They don't want to work for anybody. And there's great liberty and great freedom in having your own business. 
So think business, too. You, you can get a job online, but think start your own business as well. You'll be amazed. Have you? By the way, have you started your blog yet? That's a business. That's not just a some writing thing you do. That's a business. You can make thousands of dollars putting together a passionate uh, niche blog. Blog. That's right. Do it. Probably won't cost you no more. To start it. You can probably start it free on WordPress. Yeah, or any place else. Start it free if you want to. If you want your own your own little name and deal, you it'd probably be about eight dollars to start, something like that. That's your initial investment, and then you you post every week. The first month or two months, you post every day. After the third month, you just post once a week. But it has to be original writing from you. Something you're passionate about. It can be about gaming. It can be about football. It can be about sports. I guarantee you can fill in a great niche for sports now because there's no sports. You can, you can just bring up some old videos or whatever and, and comment on them. And and there are people who are so, who are so hurting and they're so sad and mad and depressed that there's no football and baseball and basketball. They'll go to your site and look at what you're talking about. Start a blog. I don't care what. I don't care who you are. You might be a big old burly man who works with wrenches and on trucks and stuff like that. Write about that. Have your have your wife to help you write about it. Have your teenagers to help you write about it. What you do, what you like. You like to fix on things. Take pictures of what you're working on and tell show other people how to do it. You you can have two thousand people following you on that project you work on for about eight weeks. And Google's going to pay you money. And then Google pays on time. Amazon pays on time. You got a book inside of you about something you're passionate about, write the book and put it on Amazon. Amazon pays on time. They pay on time. They don't mess around. Google does not mess around. They don't be messing with your money. They pay you on time. They make money off of you as well. That's all right. Family-owned business, their father started. And their, their question is, how do they keep the brilliance of the founder alive while allowing the second generation to make their own mark? This is the question they pose to Dave Ramsey. Okay. This is his forte. This is what he does. He, he, he sleeps this stuff and breathes it and thinks about it all the time. This, this is Dave Ramsey right down. Here, and here's his answer. And if you don't know what he knows, you can't answer like he answers. Here's what he says. <clears throat> Here's his answer. Your dad is going to kill the business, except to the extent that he systematically, predictably hands it over to you too. Boom. And Dave Ramsey is right. <clears throat> One of the reasons why he's right, that, that he didn't mention in this thing, and, he, and I'll share with you what he said. One of the reasons why he's right is because when you get older, you don't really know how the technology works. That's going to kill the business right there by yourself, by itself. But Dave Ramsey goes on to say the reason that he's going to kill the business is your customer base knows he's going to die. And your team members know he's going to die someday. Then Dave Ramsey said, I am 51 years old. Someday I'm not going to be doing this radio show that I'm answering your question on right now. So someday you guys, as my customer base, if you still want information like this, common sense education and empowerment, from our organization that I started with my brilliance, you have to know that I've got a plan to cause that to happen. It gives my customer base what? Confidence. It gives my team confidence that I have a transition plan today. 
and that I have a transition plan if I stay here for another 20 years. That's just the first part of his answer. I'll give you the second part tomorrow if the Lord tarries his coming and we live. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for our time together. And Lord, I pray that the people under the sound of my voice would pray to you without ceasing and get clear answers and directions from you. Show them, Lord, what you've shown me, and even more so. Help them to see into the future a little bit, and help them to understand that they need to make some decisions and they need to make some changes if they're going to survive this and uh, be there for their children and grandchildren and be there to be a witness for you. Lord, uh, lead them and guide them and direct them. They don't have to follow any man. They just need to follow you. As I'm, I'm following you, and I'm trying to help them to follow you. Because you have all of the answers. Uh, you see everything that is happening, has happened, and will happen. So long, as long as we're riding with you, Lord, we'll be all right. So help the people to get on board with you and ride with you going forward. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. <clears throat> Dear friend, if you're not riding with Jesus at all because you don't know him, you need to get to know him today. You need to believe in Jesus Christ. You need to understand that you are a sinner and you need help. The Bible says we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. <clears throat> Please understand that because of your sin and sins, you deserve punishment in that awful place called hell. We all do. I do. The Pope does. The Dalai Lama does. Joel Osteen does. Everybody deserves to go to hell because we all have sinned against God. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. This includes physical death and spiritual death. When the body goes to a grave as soon as uh, in a few days after it dies, the soul goes immediately to that awful place called hell. That place called hell that Jesus Christ preached on more than anybody in the Bible. That place called hell that Jesus Christ said, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. That place called hell that Jesus talked about when he said, it is a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hell, my dear friend, is bad news, and that's where you will go. Just like a criminal goes to jail, you will go to hell. Because you are a criminal, and so am I. And we deserve to go to jail forever. We, need to, we, deserve, we deserve to go to hell forever. But we don't have to. See, hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you. Straight from Jesus Christ himself, the same one who preached about hell. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The phrase, for God so loved the world, dear friend, means that if you are in this world, see right now all that, all that matters is that if you were to die, where would you go? Heaven or hell? That's all that matters now because you're going to die for the first time in your lifetime. And in my lifetime, we're all under the serious threat of death just by living and breathing. So all that matters now is where you're going to go after you die because you're going to die. You need to understand that. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, after this, the judgment. 
So you need to be saved from hell and saved to heaven. And here's how you do that. For God so loved, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The phrase, for God so loved the world, means that if you are in this world right now, as the old preachers used to say, with the blood running warm in your veins, air still in your lungs, God loves you. No matter what you have done, no matter what you're doing, or who you, who you did it with, God is not like that. God still loves you. He loves you with an unconditional love. And he wants to save you from your predicament. The next phrase, that he gave his only begotten son. This verse is talking about Jesus Christ. In reality, Jesus Christ is speaking about himself. Basically, Jesus is saying that God gave me up for you. I'm his only begotten son. He sent me to die in your place. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, Jesus knew he was the only begotten son when he said it. He was speaking of himself. Jesus Christ, who never committed a sin in word, thought, deed, or emotion. Jesus Christ, who walked on the water, who raised the dead, who told the storm to shut up and the sea to sit down, and it did. Jesus Christ, who gave sight to the blind, who healed the sick at will, who cast out demons. Jesus Christ, this same Jesus, chose to die for your sins and for mine. As John the Baptist called him, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin of the world. And all you have to do is believe in him. Jesus Christ died for our sins, for your sins. Put your name there. Jesus Christ died for your sins, Bobby. Jesus Christ died for your sins, and he was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God. And all you have to do is do what he tells you, believe in him. Our next phrase says that, is that whosoever, believeth in him. The word whosoever means anybody at any time. That includes you. The word believeth means to have faith in him, to trust in him, not in yourself, not in your mama. Not in your daddy, not in your preacher father, not in your uncle, not in your family members who are members of the Mount Nebo Baptist Church or some other church. You trust in Jesus. You believe in Jesus. You have faith in Jesus, not in yourself, me, or anybody else. And he will save you. For the next phrase says, should not perish. This refers to eternal punishment in that awful place called hell. And lastly, the phrase, but if you will, rather have everlasting life in heaven with God. That's what it means. It's your choice. Would you rather die and go to hell and spend the first million years of eternity in hell where we all deserve to go? Or would you be willing to, uh, or would you rather take God's free gift of salvation by simply believing in Jesus Christ? 
calling on his name to save you and be saved and go to the heaven that you don't deserve and that we, none of us deserves. The Holy Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth of the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. Just believe that in your heart. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and was buried and rose on the third day. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you willing to do that? You don't have to. God's not going to make you. I, I can't make you. Nobody's going to make you believe in Christ. You say, well, preacher, let me get my, my life together. Let me get myself together. Then I'll come back another day, a more convenient day. You, you, the problem is uh, you're going to be dead before you get your life together. Well, preacher, let me just kind of go take care and talk to my family back in Louisiana. Let me talk with them about it. You might die on your way to Louisiana. The Bible talks about how that today is the day of salvation. You need to believe in Christ for yourself. You may go talk to your family. They may be religious but not saved and talk you out of it. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ right now while you have a chance. Because tomorrow is not promised you. You can be on a ventilator by the end of the week and you can't talk to anybody. You're out. Almost dead. So believe in Christ today. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul. If you have never prayed to God in this way and uh, you don't know how to do it and you want me to lead you in it, I'll be glad to do so. Let's pray the sinner's prayer together. Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, believing in your heart in Jesus Christ. Holy Father God, Holy Father God in heaven, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I acknowledge before you, Lord, that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. I admit that I have broken your Ten Commandments. To name just a few, Lord, I have taken your holy name in vain. I've dishonored and disobeyed my parents. I have lusted in my heart and coveted in my heart after people and things. I have stolen things before. I have lied before. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy upon me, a sinner. I know that I deserve to go to hell forever. Just like a criminal deserves to go to jail. Please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart. In Jesus Christ. As he said. I believe with all of my heart that he died for my sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and, and into my spirit and save my soul. Thank you for your free gift of salvation that I do not deserve. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past. Help me to change and help me to turn from my evil life and to follow you in the new life, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name I pray. Amen.
dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus, please go to gospellightsociety.com and download my book free of charge titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. If you believed in Jesus Christ today, dear friend, please contact us at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you to help you grow in the faith. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, Lord willing, it will be 9 o'clock, uh, 8 o'clock Pacific time, 10 o'clock Central time, 11 o'clock East tomorrow. Until next time, beloved, God loves you, we love you. May God bless you real good is my prayer. Let's all stand for prayer.